Hello, everyone. This is Andy Wagner. Welcome back to the Strong Sexy You podcast. I'm here with my other A team members, Aubrey Work and Alyssa Siegel. Hey, guys. Hey, Hi. So today we are going to chat about our top six ways to make your workouts more effective. And there are way more than six, but we wanted to kind of consolidate it down to six. And some are just fun things and some are really serious things. Um, and I'm going to start off with a fun one because while some people might find this very trivial, I know all three of us, this is like a key component to our workouts. So the first one I want to talk about is wearing a cute outfit when you work out. Are you guys with me? 100%. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, you know me well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you feel good and you look good in what you're wearing, you're going to perform better, right? I mean, I for me, it has to be a good fit. So you all have those leggings that don't stay up and you're constantly hiking them up yep. the whole time you're working out or fashion, get them out of there. You're not going to wear them. <laughs> the sports bra. I, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to the gym and I'm like, oh, today I'm going to do sprints on the treadmill or I'm going to do plyometrics. And I'm like, oops, wore the wrong bra. I can't do that today. <laughs> and not that I'm like overly endowed, but you know, you need that support. Um, what do you guys favorite one things? wardrobe malfunction for you to learn your lesson on that? And you know exactly. what I like to relate it to, um, two things, you know, let's say you are a football player. Do you go play football without your helmet and your shoulder pads and your spikes or whatever, and your cup, you know, you're going, not that you're going in for battle at the gym, but at the same time, you know, there's an attire, just like I tell people, like you kind of transform that say like the ballerina ballerinas have their hair in a bun. It's the black leotard, the pink tights. And it actually triggers something, you know, psychologically when you're like, okay, I'm putting on this outfit. It's kind of like your superhero outfit. So you can go into the gym and have the best physical experience possible. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I love that Absolutely. analogy you're turning into a superhero with your outfit. Um, what are your favorite <laughs> workout clothes, you guys? Um, go ahead, Aubrey. <laughs> oh, well, you know what? Mine's ha mine has evolved. I used to, so I used to dress really crappy when I would go to the gym. I'd wear sloppy outfits and I, I look like a hot mess <laughs> because that's what I was taught until I actually got certified with Les Mills. And this was in my 20s. So Les Mills, they um, do pre-choreographed group fitness classes. They were like the godfather of it all. So once I got certified with body pump, they're like, you're putting on makeup. You're looking good. You got to look the instructor part. I was like, I put on makeup to work out. So I <laughs> started things. And then I, then Lululemon came about. My, I'll never forget my friend who lived in New York, New York City at the time was like, you have, you've never heard of Lululemon. You, we didn't have any in the Pittsburgh area. This is, you know, many moons ago. Oh, go to Lululemon and the fit, everything was just amazing. So even though I still love me some Lululemon, I think because my personality has changed, you know, my personality or has been magnified. I shouldn't say changed, like we grow and evolve. So, um, my guilty pleasure is probably, you know, the majority of the planet as well as bombshell sportswear. I really do love the fit of their clothes. It kind of reflects a little bit more of, of my body type better. That's that's what I'm rocking these. Days. Awesome. I have not tried um, Bombshell. I, I'm still oh, a Lululemon girl yeah. for leg, like all my leggings. I love the Fast and Freeze. I love the Aligns. Um, they're flared leggings. I still have a pair of those flared leggings from 2008, maybe. And they just brought them back in like the last year. And I'm like, oh, I don't have to buy them. I already have them. <laughs> Every time I think things um, aren't going to come back, they do. They do. I also like, um, for sports bras, I like Savvy. It's a, an online company. They have the best sports bras. But for tanks, I really love, and it's Amazon. You guys, they're so cheap. Uh, it's called CRZ Yoga, and they have amazing tops. So those are my top three for workout clothes. Okay. Yeah. So I also like Bombshell and lululemon um i like zaya it's one of the another online yeah online ones i a lot of my own clothes with zaya for a long time i did the ellie box which every month i got an outfit delivered and you could go on and you could pick it um I probably oh, that would be fun. Like, yeah it's fun and um and then you could skip it if you didn't you know want that outfit and I, a lot of, i did that for probably a year and a half and a majority of my clothes are that i kept 
are there. But once I learned my colors, which we've talked about before, it got a little harder, you know, and I was skipping because mm-hmm. I was like, shoot, not my color, not my color. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I, did, and, uh, I remember when you got that Ellie box, that company still exists. I think so. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's, it's it's like, like, um, stitch fix and the same thing with his colors. So we specifically yeah. specified, like, these are the colors that we want. So I wonder if they would do that. Maybe. Well, you, what Let's they do the is they have, um, for sure. they have like six outfits, six or eight outfits put together and I would look at it and like what I needed. So like, if I really liked, like it would be a sports bar, sports bra, a top and pants. So it was always like three pieces. Um, if I needed shorts, you know, I kind of like pieced together and think, thought about what I had in my closet already that I could mix and match with. Um, but then again, like when it started being like all so spring, you know, or summer, like, and those aren't my colors. I'm like, you know, bold and bright colors. (laughs) (laughs) So it's, it was just like, I was skipping. So then I'm like, well, maybe I should just pick out my own. (laughs) So, but I do have a lot of stuff from Zaya. They have, they have good control fab and, um, yeah, but I've recently really like bombshell. Cool. We can definitely include all those uh, links in our show notes. So if you guys ever want to go shopping and get our favorites, you can do that. (laughs) Um, So let's move on. This next thing to make your workout more effective, this seems like a no brainer, but I know you guys are going to agree with me that you see people do this all the time. Put your phone down. Okay. Um, And I don't mean like put your phone down and not listen to anything. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but I'm saying the people who are constantly taking selfies, one selfie is good. Um, or the ones who are scrolling through social media in between sets, like, are you here to work out? Or are you here to check your social media? It drives me insane. Uh, what do you guys think about putting the phone down? <laughs> That's my time well, to not communicate. Like, I actually don't communicate with people because I know that I get sucked into a conversation. Um, I think I really want to apply this technique when I'm around my son, because sometimes like we have that window that it's like our time. And you get sucked in. I mean, it is the black hole. We're all victim to it. These are made to be addictive. So I think that, you know, to have that off limits and you can set those little um, parameters on your phone too, for your phone to go dark between a certain hour. So that's what I do. I like my phone doesn't. I know there are times where we have, there are times where we have to have our phone. Like um, say you have somebody come into your house to do some work and they're going to call between a certain time or Your kid's not feeling great, but you send them to school anyway. I know that's taboo these days. (laughs) Whatever it is, you need to see if somebody calls you or texts you. The greatest thing that happened to me is my watch. So I can, you know, a lot of people have Apple watches as the Fitbit. I can see if something pops up. And if it's something urgent, I can run and grab my phone out of my bag. Or I know I used to go to Orange Theory and the girls at the front desk would always be like, leave your phone here. If somebody calls you, you know, we'll come and get it. Or if your son calls or whatever. So that was always good because I love being able to, go work out with my trainer or go to a class and just disconnect for the whole hour. It's awesome. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So if I'm at a class, I definitely don't have my phone. Um, It's completely, you know, gone. I actually avoided getting a, I don't actually have a smartwatch. I have the Fitbit, which is, but it still is connected to my phone. I waited a long time because I'm like, I don't want bothered. (laughs) I don't want bothered. But I do like, I do like it now. I have a nice steps, but at the gym uh, and we'll get to it when we talk about what we listen to, I do have my phone on me because of what I listen to. And sometimes there's ads, which sucks, but, um, it just, I think it's just the mental thing of, well, Aubrey, she's sleeping at the gym. Like I'm business. Like, don't freaking talk to me. <laughs> like, right. like, if I'm, you know, I, mean, I know I'm like, someone's trying to catch my attention before and I just like pretend like I don't hear them and like have my earbuds in like I don't want bothered I'm there to yeah be done that's like the out. universal sign like if I have earbuds yeah. in don't talk to me <laughs> yeah, I just act like I don't hear them <laughs> so you guys know all right moving on our next our next way to make our workouts more effective and this is probably where we're going to spend the meat of our time today but It's the mind muscle connection, really focusing on the body parts that you're working, thinking about your goals, think about why you went there and really get the most out of your workout. You know, thinking about squeezing a certain muscle group or looking a certain way. Um, I know you guys have a little bit different take on this than I do. One of the things I like to do is, you know, if I'm working shoulders, 
I wear a tank top that makes my shoulders look awesome. So while I'm moving it, I can see the muscle that's moving. Um, same with, with leg day. And our my mentor friend, Kathy Savage, she taught me this. She's like, wear shorts on the day you do leg day so you can see your leg muscles working. Well, duh, yeah, why haven't I been doing that? Of course, so I do that on leg day, I wear shorts so I can see what I'm working. Um, that's that mind muscle connection and also contracting those muscles that I'm working. It is very easy to go through a workout and not really think about contracting the muscle. Have you guys done that? Way back in the day, I mean, yeah, right? Before, yeah. <laughs> um, but I know, you know, you guys have a little bit different take on this. Aubrey, I want to hear uh, what you have to say about the mind muscle connection with the workouts. So this one's always a really big one for me. And I have learned over the years in terms of like how to coach people better. And also I kind of spotted it on my own body once I got into bodybuilding where I thought, oh, just genetically, I have more fat on my inner thighs or genetically, I have more fat on my midsection when that is true. But I have grown to a posture where I don't activate my inner thighs in certain in exercises and then other muscles actually kind of dominate. Same with my core. I think that I have a strong core, but I'm actually not really forward flexing my spine in certain exercises. Now, my glutes are very overdeveloped. I love them. Um, but literally in every exercise that I do, I'm constantly contracting my glutes based on how my skeletal structure is. I have a very anterior tilt to my pelvis. So it kind of forces me to contract my glutes more. So I started to analyze it a little bit more on other body types as I was helping people just kind of balance their body symmetry and also coach people on in pole dancing. And I noticed what, when people are not successful at a skill, their brain is actually not firing the right muscles, either hold, hold them on the pole to squeeze effectively. Something else is taking over again, based on their posture. So I literally do this one technique and I have people like do like taps and slaps on their body where I'm like, no, we want to engage this muscle here. And right before you contract it, you're going to tap or slap. So they might look like a sumo wrestler doing this, like <laughs> all the things, you know, <laughs> or as long as they're comfortable with it, I will like poke them. I'll be like, do you mind if I poke you in the glute right now? And I'm like, I do not feel anything firing. Now that's a really old school technique. I mean, you could get like the electrodes out, which would be ideal, right? Um, mm -hmm. Alyssa and I have talked about that before where it's like, sign us up for that. So you can actually really see that data as it's coming across. But if you don't have that option, get out the sumo slaps and see if it <laughs> works for you. I love that. <laughs> but we can't slap other people. Yeah, no. <laughs> hey, you don't know until you try, I guess. Gentle tap. <laughs> oh, Alyssa, I know that you um, have kind of a technique that you adopted while you're lifting. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, so I, I think you guys know I train under Aubrey. So a lot of this is from, uh, from her and her research and everything. Um, again, with the really squeezing the muscle, um, I also visualize what I want it to look like. So I'm going to be doing a show here in four weeks, less than four weeks. Uh -huh. um, so when I'm working shoulders or whatever, I like visualize like what I want it to look like as I'm squeezing, really focusing on that muscle, glutes, you know, everything the same way with that. Another thing um, I do is um, I work out very differently than I used to. I think I used to kind of just get it done, you know, not really feeling it. So now I'm focusing on the muscle. Um, sometimes I don't even count, start my count until I start to feel it. So I was like, okay, now I'm going to count. Now it just depends on what um, plan I'm doing. If I'm doing a higher rep plan, I'd be dead. I won't do that, <laughs> you know, because I'm already <laughs> Like, you know, I'm on rep 35. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Like if I'm doing 20 reps and I'm not counting until rep eight and I'm actually doing, yeah. So like, you know, it, it just depends on the plan, but if we're doing like a heavier with a smaller rep range, then yeah, I might not start counting to, I want to say until it hurts, but until I start to feel it. I think that was like a Muhammad Ali technique, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Audrey? Don't start counting until it hurts. Yeah. 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 I love that. And then, <laughs> and another thing, um, and then sometimes I'll just try to like, so if it's 20, then I'll be like, I'm just going to do that one more. And um, I got that from something from Motiversity. And um, there's one other one. Uh, oh, 
another thing from Aubrey, uh, have a chant. So when it starts to get hard and you got this from Tony Robbins, um, every day in every way, I'm getting stronger and stronger. So like, I will just chant that or like I have the best ass on stage or <laughs> sorry, um, or, you know, what, something like that. Like I have a chance where whatever I'm finishing that if I'm just having trouble getting to that last one, I just, I just keep saying it and it, it gets me there. I love the visualization of you seeing what you want to see on stage. I think that's so powerful. Mm -hmm. I, I used to do that with my fitness routines. I would actually spend just as much time practicing out on the floor as I would just putting my music on and closing my eyes mm -hmm. and seeing myself do my routine perfectly. Yeah. Um, I, no matter what beat of music at any point during the music, I knew exactly what I was doing. And that mental rehearsal was just as important as the physical rehearsal. So I, I love that one. Andy, before you go on to the next, because I think this is something that people can really take away to drive home the message. This was about, this is a study that was done almost like 20 years ago. And they took two groups of gymnasts. And I'm speaking to your point of like visualizing your routines, but we can apply this to any aspect of our life, you know, money, physical relationships. I mean, when you fell in love, I mean, I was dreaming about my, my perfect man, right? But they took two groups of gymnasts, one group physically trained 80% of the time to 20% mental. The other group, they uh, reversed that. So 20% physical training, 80% mental. The ones that actually scored higher competitions were the ones mental. Yep. the majority, 80% mm -hmm. of the time was mental. So if we don't think that there's magic to this, then we're quite mistaken because I love this quote, mind is the builder, physical is the result. Yeah, I love that. I love that. But I totally believe those results. I mean, I swear by that. So awesome. All right, so let's move on. Number four, fueling your body properly. If you're not fueling your body, but you're going and doing these killer workouts, you're kind of spinning your wheels. And we all know that. Um, we're each going to tell you a little bit about what we do for our pre and post workout. I know for myself, before every workout, I drink a pre-workout drink that includes some caffeine and some creatine. Uh, it's an isogenic product called Nitro. I've been using that since it came out many, many years ago. And I feel like I wouldn't even want to do a workout without it. I love it. <laughs> but also if I'm doing like an early morning workout, that's mostly cardio, I don't always eat first, but if I'm doing um, the earliest, I usually work out is like 11, uh, just the way my days work. And I'll have like a half a protein bar or maybe a small apple and a couple dates beforehand. And I also have that Nitro. Um, but then afterwards, I'm making sure that I get my protein within about an hour after my workout. So Aubrey, what do you do with your pre and post workout? Yeah, so I, I'm an early riser these days. So I drink my lemon water every morning, 16 ounces of water, squeeze a whole organic lemon in there. So um, after, at about 15 minutes, I do the Amped Nitro. Alyssa brought me some this morning because I was out. <laughs> and then oh, it's not like- Lifesaver. It is it's a lifesaver. You definitely, because I've worked out without it for so many years and then introduced to this product. I was like, I knew that the benefits of creatine and I used some when I used to train very high endurance classes like body pump. And I noticed less muscle soreness when I have, when I supplement with creatine. So I thought this was a great product to introduce. Um, when I come back from the gym, I do my 16 ounces of celery juice. Um, but the, actually the sodium in, in <laughs> celery juice will really balance out your electrolytes. And then um, I do have a fruit smoothie. So it's all fruit and um, it's hard to get used to looking at the carbohydrate count for those of you who count macros, but I have found that it is really very great nutrient timing for me personally after a hard workout than to replenish yourself with, you know, things that are rich in potassium as well as um, nu nutrition from fruit. So that's what I do. Cool. Alyssa, what's your pre and post, uh, post regimen look like? Well, I also do the nitro, um, <laughs> but, um, you know, in show season, so I count macros, there's usually nine carbs in that. Drink. <laughs> so I do them only on the days that I'm doing like big muscles, like I do glutes and legs. I have, I need it for that. Um, sometimes I do like a killer back too, and I'll do it, but if it's my other days where I'm just doing like, maybe like an upper body, not as much, I will leave that out 
Um, and then I come home, I also I do the celery juice as well. On most days, if I'm going to be out and about, I might throw a banana if I'm doing like glutes or something, because I have a drive home, you know, just to have some sugar. Like today I went and did the two hours and then I went and did a cardio class and I took a couple of dates and apples and I had to like sit down and eat it before I got in my car to drive home. And then I came home. <laughs> I love that feeling. Uh, yeah. Well, I but then I do fun. try to get protein within, you know, usually have my breakfast with eggs. I do work out in the morning most days, most days. Okay. So, so you know, the buzz right now, you guys talked a little bit about protein, the buzz now, especially for women like over 40, you know, so many are not getting enough protein. So they're, maybe they have the workout part, right. And they're lifting heavy and they're doing all that, but they're not getting enough protein in their day. Um, what do you guys think about like, what does your protein intake look like mine? I'll give you mine. Uh, I'm around 120 grams of protein each day, but I would say between hundred and 120, uh, on most days and I spread it out throughout the day. And, um, I feel like I'm getting enough. I, there are days where I, I slack a little bit, but my ultimate goal, you know, would be maybe up around 150. Uh, cause I am trying to build muscle right now, but what, what's it look for, like for you guys? Aubrey, I'll ask you first. Yeah. You know, I'm currently under construction and in experimentation to like, see if I can dispel any myths behind this. Um, as you guys know, I love learning about new dietary approaches, um, to thrive. Um, actually I was doing a little bit of research last night and I wonder, I question, is it the protein that our average person is lacking, or is it just like the foods are so, uh, depleted from nutrients based on how, you know, farming has evolved and the depletion of, um, nutrients in our soil. So it's gone down rapidly. Um, I do think that protein is very important. Um, Andy, you eat such a healthy diet, Alyssa as well. So it would be interesting to take kind of like the standard American, I think, and just to see, okay, what is their food looking like? Um, when I do have new clients on boarding and they, you know, confess to me their food sins, which please know, I want to say there's no food sins. I, um, just dealt with this. You guys know I'm a person who's had a very challenged relationship with food over the years and have made, has made it a superpower of mine. But when I look at people's food logs, they're eating stuff that just doesn't do anything right. It's like packaged stuff that it's like a snack that's labeled healthy. And of course there's no protein in it, but there's also <laughs> nothing else. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm oh, yeah. eating a protein shake after my workout, but I'm getting so much nourishment through this for the cells of my body. So I carry, I think a pretty decent amount of muscle mass. So I think it's, that's where I sit on that subject. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Well, Alyssa, I know you're uh, preparing for a show and you are counting macros now. Uh, do you mm -hmm. want to give us your secrets, like what your protein intake looks like? I'm about at 150 to 170 a day. Okay. Yeah. Do you find that I hard do. to reach? You do? Um, dairy free as well. So okay. with the dairy, it's a lot easier because I would do Greek yogurt. Right. Um, even Greek yogurt with mixed with some protein powder. Uh, so it is a little harder now that I'm dairy free, um, for the last like six weeks, I'd say, or no, not six weeks, maybe last three weeks or so. But, um, yeah, so I do have to do the protein shake to get that. Okay. And, um, I try not to do more than two scoops of it a day. Um, okay. But I you're making it work protein. because you have a goal, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't do protein bars. Uh, maybe here, at, like, I don't do them now at all. In the beginning, I would limit to maybe one a week. Okay, awesome. All right, let's move on to number five. Including a good warm up and cool down in your workout, I think can make things way more effective, especially just preparing your body to move. For me, I like to hop on the treadmill for five minutes or so. Um, not necessarily running, I can walk at a brisk pace, just getting my body temperature up, loosening my muscles, and then more of a dynamic warm up off the treadmill uh, with movement, not necessarily static stretching, but that type of warm up for me prepares my body for most of my workouts. At the end, I do take some time and stretch, maybe even do a little yoga. Can you believe that, Aubrey? Me? Oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Aubrey, I know you do a little bit different type of warm up. Tell us what you do. Yeah. So um, for my warm up, 
I, uh, I do try to incorporate some deep breathing. I do some different exercises as I'm either on the treadmill or uh, the Stairmaster. And if I'm on like the step mill, I will slap on some ankle weights and I will just talk nasty to myself as I try to figure <laughs> it out um, for, you know, 10 minutes. Um, and then I foam roll. I go make out with a foam roller and I do some different posture exercises, some that you have uh, taught me, Andy, that I really like. Um, so my warm up is kind of extended. It's kind of like this way, that <laughs> but um, that's how I warm up. I love it. It sounds like a lot uh, more mobility stuff, maybe. Cool. How about you, Alyssa? Um, I'll do a little bit on the treadmill, usually like an incline, uh, mid pace walk. And then it depends on what body part I'm doing. So if I'm doing glutes, I do like some band warm ups or body weight warm ups. Um, not, not weights, you know, just to kind of prime the whatever muscle I'm doing. Cool. Yeah. And when I'm done, sometimes I'll just hop on the Peloton and do the, the just ride feature for five minutes or so, just to kind of get the lactic acid out of my muscles. But I know if I don't warm up and don't cool down, I'm way more sore mm -hmm. and just, I, I feel the fatigue more. So I really need yeah. that time to get my body ready and then come down afterwards. Mm -hmm. So all right. I'm really Number guilty six. of not cooling down. <laughs> Andy, I quick, Andy, I have a quick question for you, actually. As yeah. this is in show mode and I'm in uh, the improvement season mode, how long do you usually spend at the gym or working out with your trainer? What's your average session? Uh, 45 to an hour. Okay. No more than that. Yeah, you and that includes everything. Like for those of you who don't follow in Andy on social media, she is the most efficient person to exercise I'm like oh my gosh do you know my trainer just told me the other day he's like it's kind of strange you don't rest in between your sets <laughs> I'm like, he's like in your so he used to be my son trainer. he's like Nash doesn't rest between his sets either I'm like that must be uh something yeah something with us I don't know but yeah. I and our dogs are bunny <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. um yeah, yeah but if I had to spend more than an hour I probably I don't know if I wouldn't do it, but it just, that would be too daunting for me. So if I know I can get it all done in, like I said, 45 minutes, 50, 60, I'm good. Yeah. So, okay. all right. Number six, this is my favorite one because I, um, I love a good playlist. I love a good F-bomb in a song. <laughs> so <laughs> number six is having something really good to listen to, whether it is a playlist of music or even a podcast. Okay. A lot of people listen to podcasts when they work out. Um, I prefer music. My favorite type of music when I'm not working out is country music, but I cannot work out to country music. It's just a little too slow for me, <laughs> but I have a big range of things. I like like old school, eighties, nineties, rock, um, Bon Jovi. I'm a Nickelback fan. Do you remember, do you guys remember the program we did where everybody made fun of me for like a Nickelback? I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like Nickelback. Wait, I, was, I was at a concert. I was at a concert a couple of weeks ago and they were joking. They like suddenly started to play a uh, Nickelback song photograph. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> I thought of you. <laughs> Why did Nickelback get Nickelback such a bad, bad rap? rap? Does anybody Nickelback, know? You're photograph. Listening. I love you. I love you. I love um, photograph. Photograph. <laughs> but I also like like fun chick music, like Pink, Lady Gaga, Britney, Christina, Madonna, all that stuff. Um, but I'm also a huge Kanye fan. Uh, what do you guys listen to? What what fires you up? Aubrey, go first. Okay. So here's the deal. I don't have a playlist. I have three songs that I cycle through that I will <laughs> listen and I will pretend I'm in the music video. So one, when I'm like really wanted to rip somebody's head off, it has to let the emotions move through. <laughs> Sabotage, Beastie Boys. And okay. I, you know, they just scream at the top of my lungs if I'm in my car, that is. Um, the other one is that Andy Minio song, which you can't stop me. So I do like a lot of like beating my chest that one. And last one, when I just feel like extra sexy, I'm Circus by Britney Spears. So those are my three. I uh, that's awesome. You don't get tired of them? <laughs> no, because it's become kind of like the three versions of me, depending on what mood I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, Alyssa, before you even talk, I know 
because we made a playlist a few programs ago that was the explicit playlist and you had the most songs to contribute to the playlist. <laughs> so I'm just going to yes. preface yours with that. <laughs> yes. So when I listen to music, it is very explicit. It's <laughs> yeah, like borderline wrong. <laughs> Stuff you wouldn't listen to if your kids were working out with you, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, it's definitely. Um, I, I do want to say before I um, go into a little bit more the importance because I forgot my headphones today. And let me tell you what a difference in the workout that makes. Struggle bus, right? Yeah. Yes. I mean, it was strugglesome. Like I was there, I'm, I'm there for about two hours usually. And it was a long two hours. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, I used to always listen to, I actually don't listen to music anymore um, as much. Aubrey got me turned on to Motiversity, um, which I actually, and that's what I was saying about before, but I have to have my phone because it has the ads. I actually just go on YouTube and Google like um, hard work discipline. Um, and it was this Motiversity that came up and it's like people screaming in your ear you know positive things and there's a lot like some I don't, I don't even know how to describe it but from the one I listened to and I really liked the one segment and they said his name at the end so then I is Billy Osbrooks so then I now I just google Billy Osbrooks and I he has like an unstoppable collection so it's like a collection of things so it's like non-stop like you know, in your ear. You have so your I own usually... personal cheerleader throughout your workout. Yeah, so I, I love listen that. to that. When I'm working out, now when I'm on the treadmill, it can be anything. It can literally be an opera song that means something to me, like anything, because I'll just sit there and I'll daydream while I'm like doing my cardio on the treadmill, but um, working out definitely. And then I do have two songs when if I need to just get it done, it's DMX, Sex Gonna Give It To You. <laughs> Big surprise. That. <laughs> um, one song is from the south paul soundtrack it's called beast it's it's borderline wrong but it, it's my, my go to <laughs> that's the job right yeah. awesome well i think all six of these tips uh can help anybody to make their workouts more effective and like i said there are so many more we could have dived into sleep uh, or, you know, more mental health stuff. That, there's lots more, but I thought these six were really important. Um, we threw some fun ones in, we threw some more important ones in, but no matter what, I think it's just so important for everybody to not waste their time. So if you're going to go and do it, you want to get the most out of it. And I think all six of these tips are really helpful for that. Um, thank you guys for chiming in and giving us your input as well. I'm sure that Everybody loved hearing about your pre and post workout meals and your favorite songs. I know I did. I already knew them. <laughs> but, um, and I appreciate everyone tuning in to the Strong Sexy You podcast, and we will catch you next time. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.